Welcome back to Schmitty's Off-Road, where today we're gonna talk about the worst thing about off-roading. I know a lot of you guys might know what I'm talking about, but it is the cleanup. Worst part, in my opinion, cleanup and maintenance, they both kinda suck, but for me, it's the cleanup, because you get back from a long ride or a fun weekend, you get home, all you wanna do is relax, but then, nope, machines are muddy, so you gotta clean them up. Well, we're gonna go over a few different ways to clean them. We're gonna do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison. And we obviously got my Pro XP here. We got my dad's KRX. And we have two cleaning methods that we're gonna go over. We're gonna have the OG method that we've always used, which includes some simple green and some good old elbow grease. Method number two is gonna be using some slick products. So I'm gonna be using that today. It has a few different things in there, which I'll show you what's all included, but it's got the infamous foam cannon. Some of you guys might think it's a gimmick. I kinda do too, but we're gonna put it to the test today and see if it is a gimmick. So we're gonna go ahead, spray these two down with a hose, get that mud to start soaking. And then it's on to the competition. Let's go. Alrighty, now that we got step one underway, which is that kind of pre-soak I talk about, where we just take the hose and soak them down. No pressure or anything, this just helps soak into some of those bigger uh, mud clods and helps those come off easier because you don't really want to be wasting soap on giant clumps of mud. So we just let that soak for a little bit and then we'll hit it with the pressure washer to finally knock all that stuff off. And while I'm talking about it, I wanna show you guys a sweet little product I got for Christmas. And if you've seen them, I'm sure several of you have, but that little block off plate right there, that is one of the best things I have purchased besides my fender flares. That blocks off a lot of the mud that comes in here. So you can't even see through there anymore. That block off plate is perfect. It actually seemed to cut down on the dust too, which kind of seems weird. But what I'm thinking is that kind of covers that hole. And before you've got your tires right here and they're just kicking all that dirt and dust and stuff and it's circulating. Well, once it gets up in there, I think the pressure is weird in the cab. So once that dust gets in there, it sucks it in and then you get like a little vortex in there. And some of that is from the windshield, but not all of it, because it did it before I had the windshield. So I think it cut down on the dust, surprisingly. So I'll drop a link down in the description below if you guys want to pick up some of those. I know there are several companies out there that make them. These ones are probably the cheapest ones. You could even make your own. The KRX really needs them. It, you can see all the way up in there, all of that is places for mud. And it sucks to clean. It's way up in there. So. KRX really needs it, but that's a little side note. So now we're gonna talk about the weapons of choice for today. Obviously, they're both gonna be using the pressure washer. We just got a little Ryobi electric one, but this is where the fun begins. So we'll start with the first method, which is gonna be simple green. We get it in these giant jugs. It's just easier for the way we do it. This is probably gonna be your cheapest option. So you, you go get a big jug of simple green and then get yourself a little roundup bottle with a little sprayer on it. And you're gonna wanna do a 50-50 mix. So 50-50 simple green and water. That's all we do. And then you're good to go for that. We've also got this little attachment, which we might use. It's more for the underneath side. It hooks up right to your pressure washer and it's got these three nozzles on the bottom. So it's for spraying underneath the machines. And then this is the little kit that Slick Products sent me. So obviously you got your little brush. You've got your cleaner and degreaser, which this is more, I'll have to read the directions, but I think this is safe for plastics, rubber, and metal. So this will be really good for 
the engine bay area, I might use a little bit of that and try to spruce it up a little bit. And then you've got your microfiber cleaning, rag, towel, whatever. I think I know what that's for. I'll touch on that in a minute. Now your little nozzle for the degreaser. Your washcloth. I'm throwing stuff around here, but washcloth. And then you've got your off-road wash, which this is what will go into the foam cannon. This is the foam cannon, and they also have, so they have two versions of this. This is your pressure washer cannon, and they also have one that goes onto a normal garden hose, so that's kind of nice. And this is the last thing, this little shine and protect it. I think this is what's gonna help have the or make the mud kind of fall off the next time we clean it so i'm going to try some of this and see how that works so you pretty much just spray that on there and then you're going to use this microfiber towel and just buff it off that's pretty much all you got to do oh one more thing rain x water repellent i use this on our windshields just because it seems to cut back on fog. I know like in the fall when we were riding, you hit some water and all the steam comes up and fogs up the windshield. So that Rain-X kind of cuts that down. And then also just when you get little water splashed up on there, that just helps the water shed straight off. So though, that's all of what we're gonna be using today. It looks like a lot, but not too bad. So we're gonna get these prepped and ready to go. And I'm gonna hit my machine with the slick products, hit my dad's with the simple green, we're gonna compare them, see which one's better for your money. Let's go. All right, so step one for the slick products is gonna be the cleaner and degreaser. What we're gonna do is spray it more on the motor area and maybe the rear shocks. And it says to let that soak for 30 to 60 seconds. And then we'll spray it off. It says to scrub it off. We're just gonna spray it off because then we're gonna hit it all with the foam cannon. So for now, we're just going to spray this on there, let it soak, and then we're gonna go get the foam cannon prepped and ready. And it recommends four to eight ounces for one tank of the pressure foam cannon. And then you can adjust your foam ratio from there based off of the nozzle. I'll show you guys that once I get that all set up and ready to go. But we're gonna get this sprayed on there, get that thing set up, and we're gonna start flinging some foam. Let's see how she works. I said, hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. Time to rinse it off and see what happens. Well, there you guys go. That's the foam cannon. <laughs> it's actually worked really well as far as like the foam output you can adjust it and when you adjust it all the way it freaking launches foam it's crazy it doesn't do a bad job really i don't know if you guys can see any spots there obviously it's still wet i didn't dry it or anything yet but first impression it's not not too bad i think the simple green might be a little bit better you can see obviously like stuff i don't know if you can quite see that that's gonna come off a lot better when I actually scrub these down and kind of rub them a little bit with the wash mat or the wash rag. But it doesn't do a bad job if you're just trying to do a quick spray down and get ready to go for the next ride. One thing I actually just noticed when I kind of rubbed it there is it leaves kind of a, not slimy, but almost, greasy but not like oily kind of texture so i wonder if that maybe helps um, shed the mud the next time you wash it so maybe this first time it doesn't do a super super good job but the next time it just makes it cleaning easier 
So you can tell, obviously, it's not gonna clean all the mud off. It'll be a lot better once you actually scrub it. So that's kind of how it looks. That's the slick products. We're gonna go ahead and go to my dad's. We're gonna use the simple green and see how they compare. I'm probably not gonna just do one coat. I'll do the simple green and then we'll compare. But then to finish off both of them, I'll probably use one more application of both the slick and the simple green. But then I'm gonna use a wash rag and really wipe them down and get them super clean. But for the main purposes of this challenge, it's gonna be a simple, which one does better without any extra elbow grease into it. So let's spray my dad's down with simple green and see how it does. And there you guys have it. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm gonna say Simple Green is the clear winner in this competition. It literally got rid of all of those little dirt spots. I could probably dry this thing off and put it right back in the garage. There's, I mean, it is clean. I mean, there's hardly any dirt on it anymore. Did a way better job than the slick products. Even on the tires, obviously there's some dirt in there but like the tires as a whole it really makes them it gets them clean the slick products leaves quite a bit on there simple green definitely does a better job especially on the tires but on the plastic as a whole it's much cleaner so i might do one more coat on his or I might just rinse it off one more time and throw it back in the garage because it really doesn't need any more work. It, the simple green really does a good job. And like I said earlier, it's gonna be significantly cheaper. I think that whole setup that I got from Slick Products is about $120. That jug of simple green is maybe 50. I've never bought it, but I would assume maybe around 50 bucks. And it's gonna be a lot easier. Literally all you need is a hose and a pressure washer with that slick stuff it is kind of a pain to keep switching attachments on your pressure washer but for now i'm gonna say the simple green is the clear winner i'm gonna go ahead and do one more coat with the slick products on my pro but mainly just so i can scrub it and get all that dirt and grime off because it doesn't even look like i've sprayed it yet so this is after my second spray of foam and then i actually went through and washed it by hand so all that dirt is gone now. Everything looks pretty good, but I had to wash it twice and I had to do it by hand. So I obviously would opt for the simple green, at least in the kind of in the foam cannon application. I don't think the foam does a good enough job at penetrating the dirt. Maybe if it was more concentrated, it would do better, but it definitely does not do it as good as they claim. I'm hoping maybe it makes it easier to clean the next go around, but we will see. So for today, that's it. I appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe button. Helps me out, helps me get noticed, helps me keep doing these videos. So thank you guys, we'll see you next time. Peace.